Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 68 of Lab Padres SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. You've come to the right place for your Starbase fix. Now let's dig in. Starting off this week in the early hours of Friday morning, the third section of Booster 12's methane tank was staged in front of Mega Bay. Just minutes later, the fourth section of the methane tank joined it as it was staged on the other side of the doorway into Mega Bay. Shortly after dawn, the third prefabricated corner of the second level of the new Mega Bay was removed from the assembly and transport stand in preparation for its final lift. Next, the LR-11000 lifted the pre-assembled corner and moved it into position to allow crews to bolt it to the level below to complete its installation. Around the same time, at the other end of the current Star Factory building, a concrete pump truck could be seen placing concrete for the next section of the floor for the first stage of the building's expansion. As disassembly of the ground fabrication building continued, the large door at the west end of the building was removed by a crane. After several hours of work, the next section of the Star Factory floor had been poured and the pump truck packed up to leave. Throughout the rest of Friday afternoon and evening, crews continued to push forward on the disassembly of the ground fabrication building. The careful and methodical disassembly of this building compared to the destruction of Low Bay and the propulsion building could indicate that this building is just being relocated instead of removed. Friday night, the first corner of the third level of the new Mega Bay was moved from assembly area at Sanchez to the staging area next to the new building. And just like Friday, Saturday morning began with a lift of a corner of the new Mega Bay. This time, the fourth corner of the second level of the building was removed from its assembly stand and then lifted and installed on the last remaining open corner. Saturday, the disassembly of the ground fabrication building continued as several roof sections were removed, followed by their supporting columns. Eventually, the building's bridge crane was also removed, something that was necessary at this stage to allow for progress to continue. Saturday night, crews removed a trench of freshly cut concrete in front of Gate B2 next to Mid Bay in preparation for the installation of a new power cable. In the early hours of Sunday morning, the deconstruction of the ground fabrication building was completed as the last pieces of steel were removed by the crane. First thing Tuesday morning at the launch site, crews were spotted reinstalling the first of the cryogenic flex lines to the booster quick disconnect on the launch mount. Meanwhile, sections of deluge piping were relocated either staging for installation or possibly just being moved further away from the suborbital pads ahead of a possible Ship 25 static fire. Wednesday morning, Rover 2 caught the delivery of some additional prefabricated sections for the new stairs that are being added to the side of the orbital launch tower. Around the same time, work on the booster quick disconnect continued with the installation of another replacement flexible pipe to the back side of the mechanism. Wednesday afternoon, with the road closed for testing for just the second time since the integrated flight test, Ship 25 underwent a fresh round of testing. This time, after cryo-load, SpaceX performed a spin prime with the Starship's Raptor engines as they worked their way towards the vehicle's first static fire in the near future. Late that afternoon, Booster 12's methane tank was lifted and stacked onto its final section, which means that both of its commodity tanks are now whole, and we should see another fully stacked Super Heavy in the near future. On Thursday morning, Ship 29's second aft flap was lifted and installed onto the vehicle in High Bay as the newest Starship nears completion. Wrapping up this week at Starbase, at night the second section of the third level of the new Mega Bay was moved to the build site from the assembly area at Sanchez. Switching over to the Cape, Friday morning crews went up in a man lift to inspect the top of Booster 1073 following an issue with the lifting rig the previous day. The next day, the booster was finally lifted off of the drone ship and placed onto the dock as a storm rolled into the area. A few hours later, the crane again lifted the booster and finished the transfer to the dockside processing stand where the legs could be folded in. By Sunday, the vehicle had been prepared for its return to Hangar X and was lifted one last time and laid horizontally on the transporter. 
That evening, Falcon 9 Booster 1067 lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 for the launch of the Satria Communications Satellite on its way to geostationary transfer orbit. Just over two days later, both of the fairing halves from Satria 1 launch were returned to Port Canaveral by SpaceX's fairing recovery vessel, Doug. Early on Wednesday afternoon, Crosby's skipper towed a short fall of Gravitas back to the dock at Port Canaveral, carrying Booster 1067 following the successful mission. In the pre-dawn hours of Thursday morning, the penultimate Delta IV Heavy lifted off from Space Launch Complex 37B for the NROL-68 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office in what was ULA's first rocket launch of 2023. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week and thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.